Well, good morning. And how are we all doing today? As you can see around me, it's completely pitch black. And it is officially 5.47 a.m. I got a goal in mind, solo R&D. I'm out here by myself and I am going to try to get me a gator gator trout once again very easily hopefully i don't know if it'll go as easy as it did the last time which i caught you know a five and a half pounder in five minutes but i'm out here early we got a really good tide it's high in the morning and low at noon so i'm gonna rig up in the dark here and see if i can catch some little tiny croakers well, I guess you could say the inshore fishing is 100% official. Uh, I used to have my downrigger swivels mounted to the boat right here. I took them off the other day. I don't think I'll be doing any going after kingfish and doing any trolling. Uh, it's the inshore season right now, so. No long boat rides required. No. That didn't take too long. Got our first candidate here. Yep. Lure manufacturers spend billions a year to make that, get that perfect sound. And it's right here with Mr. Croca. Now here's a tip. If you're catching croakers and the water's pretty deep, I'm only in 20 feet right now, but if you're at the jetties or you're out in deeper water and you're wanting to keep these croakers alive um, hit them set the hook on them and reel them up real slow you don't want their whole butt blowing out and them getting the bends on you so give that guy a little oxygen a little o2 and catch another i'm going to give you a few tips here I don't know if you know this, it doesn't matter to me, I'm just going to tell you. Don't lollygag around. Watch your sounder, and if you're getting bites, 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 don't decide to put your rod down, drink a uh, soda, and eat a sandwich. That goes with all fishing, but a lot of people that I take don't know that. Once you get them going on the bottom, especially when you're looking for schooly fish, like croakers, yellowmouth, trout, whiting, schooly fish, always keep a uh, bait on the bottom. I don't care if you have to sacrifice a whole giant shrimp just to let them peck on it. All right. And another thing is if the current's not running really hard, don't be afraid every once in a while to lift your sinker up and feel the bottom. When it hits the bottom, feel if it's hard or not. You can feel the difference between a soft mud bottom and a hard bottom. And when your sinker is on shell or rock or whatever, and you pick your sinker up and it goes bong, bong, that's making noise on the bottom. And these fish are curious. You got smell of your bait, and you got the sinker going bunk, bunk, bunk on the bottom. And they'll they'll come. I just did it. I've got like four croakers already now. I had a couple kitty cats and a piggy perch. So it's just things that I do. You know, I just don't drop my bait to the bottom and let it just sit there and not do anything. I kind of keep a tight line on it. Actually, a lot of people refer to this type of bottom fish as tight lining. So, that's what I do. I thump my sinker on the bottom. I'll tell you, I've done it before when nobody else is doing it. Um, and I've hooked, you know, big red fish when the tide's not running hard. Yeah, I mean, that's just little things you want to try to do. Don't be catching fish and then decide, oh, I'm going to go eat a sandwich. And, I mean, no, when you're on it, 
Like right now, all of a sudden, I'm not getting any bites anymore. I was right on them. I was right on them. I could see myself picking up and dropping to the bottom in my sounder. I see my sinker doing this in my sounder. Use your sounder. If you don't have a good quality sounder, go get one. What we're doing here is trying to catch the smallest croakers you can. Don't, you know, don't worry about big ones. You want the absolute smallest that you can get, especially around here in Northeast Florida. We don't have little tiny ones that you can just, you know, pick up very uh, easily. You got to fish for them and you gotta, you gotta sort through them. Only use a little piece of shrimp. I've tried gulp, Berkeley power bait, uh, fish bites, I've tried it all. Shrimp. They peck it, it gets in the water, and it sends the, the other, other fish coming. You can put a big shrimp on, let it sit down there, and let them peck it. And that will act as even it's like a little chum on the bottom kind of thing. You're catching bait. You're not out here to do anything right in the beginning other than catch little tiny croakers. And as many as you can. And don't do the 10-year-old syndrome. The 10-year-old syndrome is I'm catching them here. Oh, I don't get bit anymore. I got to switch over there. To the other side of the boat. Always keep the baits in the same general area. Don't be tossing it out and all this when you're trying to catch them in one spot. I'm going straight over the side of the boat, always on this side right here, because this is where I've been catching them. I'm not going to make the fish go hunting around for that shrimp. I'm one guy out here right now trying to catch as many tiny croakers as I can. So I'm not making the fish hunt for the bait. I want them to know right where it is. And every time I send it down, it's in the same spot. There's one right there. Now I'm reeling them up nice and slow. I don't want to blow them out. All right. He's small, but he's not that small. I've got smaller, but it seems like here in the dark, these little guys are, these, these guy, little guys are the ones you want. Number five in the live well. A half dozen is good, 12 is better. and you don't want to experience this, you'd rather be sitting in traffic right now. Tide is just starting to fall. It's the Elko Key. Same ships come in and out of here all the time. Alrighty, I'm sort of on location. I got out the first two croakers. I'm sitting on a hard bottom spot, about 15 foot of water, and the tide needs to go way down still. I run a really, really light drag. If it's a big trout, I want them to be able to go with it as much as possible, and then I'll tighten the drag as, the, as, as I bring them to the boat, if it happens today, I don't know. I'm using just enough lead to anchor that croaker in one spot. Right now, I'm, I'm like two ounces. I like to watch them get a little nervous. We'll see what happens. Like I said, this is an angler's game. This isn't coming out and just bailing them over the side. Well, here's all my croakies. And I got a pinfish down in there too. All just happy campers. I would love those if they were half 
the size. I'd love them, love them even more. For some reason, it's very difficult to come up with a croaker that big. Sometimes it's hard to come up with a mullet that big. Sometimes it's hard to come up with a pogey that big. You know, you gotta stay optimistic, but at the same time, you gotta live in reality here. The tide really isn't low enough yet. I mean, it's not a low tide until like, you know, 11, 11.30 or something. I'm willing to put in my time. I got my really, 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 really good customer coming, Traveler Bob, on the end of the month. And Traveler Bob is a angler. And we fish two days back to back at the end of September here. We do it multiple times a year. So I'm kind of doing a little research and development for him. This is for the trophy hunter kind of thing. I mean, that's, that's what I am. That's what I'm doing. Had a lot of ship traffic come by, a lot of boat traffic, and the current is really picking up now. So we'll see. my real spot. Damn it. Oh man, what a mess this is going to be. just like a trout. Big mess. It's all wrapped in the other damn line. Come on. Come on. Wrong species. sits out there goofing around here. Alright, this is a real mess. Well, there 
you go. Planted right in the corner of the jaw. <clears throat> God dang, is he strong. Eat a live croaker. I can tell you right off the get go, he's way too big. Thirty and a half. Whoa! God dang! Man, does this guy got some spit? Spit and vinegar. All right, here you go. Whoo! My God! That dude did not want to give up. Even in the boat, he wanted to kick my, you know what? All oh, right. Let's just get this confarction completely figured out now. All right, I thought it was a trout. God dang it. All right, all fixed. Those were the first two croakers that I've put out. I have not lost a croaker not wiggled off the hook. Many times they'll wiggle themselves off the hook. Maybe it's these hooks that I'm using. I really let him eat it. He was bowing the rod like this. I hit free spool. I let him go for a second and then I let him have it. What a confarction that was. When you're along structure, this is just for, you know, St. John's River. No matter what, when you're along structure, it's like just same as float rig fishing when we're, we're letting the floats out behind the boat. You've got to have a steady, nice current. Just like float rig fishing. Because if you don't, you're dragging your baits all over the place. And you don't want that. You don't want dragging your baits all over. You want them steady behind the boat, just wagging away. Croaking, doing what they do best. Because if your, pull, if your boats whip it all over the place, which I was just at the first spot, I eventually started whipping all over. You gotta get out of there and get into a spot where that's not happening and if it starts happening leave because all you're going to do is get all hung up those croakers are going to swim around every god dang rock they can find and you don't want that there's just things that like breathing that i look for no matter what i'm doing when i'm float rig fishing when i'm bottom fishing that's just i don't know if everybody does that i don't know anything about what other people do because nobody ever talks to me. I don't get, pe I don't get pe local people telling me anything what they do. All they ever want to know is what I'm doing. You know, on videos, I give away, you know, sort of, I give away what I'm sort of doing here, right? And then they want to nitpick me for questions. Well, guess what? Go do it yourself. All this is, is planting an idea. Using the croakers, trying to catch giant trout. That's all this is, is planting the idea. Go do it yourself. I'm not giving you every god dang little detail. All right, I got one that looks like he's getting a little nervous. Oh well. You know, YouTube is, I guess, what they call the second most popular search engine. Well, when you go to a video, I get people that tell me all kinds of stupid stuff. Like, oh, it took you five minutes to get to the point. Well, I'm not your information source. You know? 
if you want something else, move on. That's how I look at it anymore. I don't give people hell on YouTube for what they do. I know how hard it is. But, man, I'm telling you, the bullshit that you got to put up with on YouTube. Oh, I got one right here. He's pulling. Is he pulling? Oh yeah, somebody was just somebody was just pulling on it. Nice long whippy eight foot rod. Just had one on. I uh, picked up my croaker and was carrying it. Thumped it really hard. There's the hook I'm using. I think it's a uh, three aught mustad turned up eye. What do they call that? An octopus hook or some kind of stupid shit. It's just small and I snell it. All right, I don't know what that was, but he was picked it up and was swimming with it. Yeah, somebody really did pick him up and was moving with him because here's my braid and then look, I got six, about 10 foot of 30 pound shock leader and every bit of it, all the way for 10 foot is literally shredded around a rock.
Not bad. Good fight. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you, thank you. He's going, you're welcome, you're welcome. I'm heading in. I didn't get any more bites on the free lined croakers. It's 1.30. Tide's starting to come in on the bottom, so I don't know if there was any trout around here at all today or not, because I saw some got float rig guys. They were trying it. They left pretty quick. And even one guy came back and tried it again, and he left. So, it's funny, they were both fishing the same spot. You can't fish around here without somebody being before you 15 minutes or after you 15 minutes. Even on a Thursday uh, morning or afternoon. There's just not enough water and too many people. Kind of crazy. We got one spot, it was hit three times, and then another guy came in on a little, small, little tiny boat, and he was on this spot, but he wasn't float rig fishing. He was doing something else, I don't know. I stayed in the exact same area the whole day. So, Alright, well, time to not make the donuts, as we say. That's good, because I got a rotisserie chicken at home. <laughs> I guess it's no feast for you, Dave. So, I don't know, maybe there weren't no trout around today here. Alright, either way. Came out and at least did something. I'll see you on the next one. We must never forget this country does not belong to them. It belongs to you, the American people. This is your home. This nation is your heritage. And our magnificent American liberty is your God-given right.